What advice would you give to high school seniors now that may be thinking about a career in hospitality? And one piece of advice I always tell people that are looking at the hospitality industry is things aren't spoon fed to you. You gotta love talking to people. And if you notice something's going wrong, don't let them say something, take initiative. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we're continuing our segment where we're highlighting college students that are entering the hospitality career and they're approaching the end of their college life and they're looking for their next opportunity. And today we've got a great guest on. His name is Ben Gutteridge. He is a student at Northern Arizona University and he's gonna come on and chat a little bit about their program, his aspirations, things that he's looking forward to as he approaches May, 2024. Hey Ben, how are you? I'm good, how are you Ted? How are you this beautiful morning? Hey, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. I'm so glad to, to spend a little bit of time with you and hear a little bit about your hospitality career so far, at least, and where you're looking to go with it. So real quickly, tell us audience a little bit about you and your background. Now, where you originally from, what made you kind of choose hospitality? Give, give us the quick, uh, the quick highlight. So I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona, I grew up here in Everyone knows Phoenix for the Phoenix Open because it's one of the biggest golfing events in the whole entire United States after like the Masters and like other golf events. So I just grew up around hospitality. My mom does real estate. My dad works in auto pimps for insurance. And it's just, I just knew I had a people touch in me. And I just, I was in high school one day to culinary my senior year. And I was just like, I really love cooking. Why can't I go to school for it? And my teachers was like, well, you can, but it's a lot of work. So I went to the next best thing and I was like, well, I'll do community college and from there see where the road takes me. And all of my majors that I've had so far in college have been hospitality related. And I'm very fortunate I've stuck with it. And by the time May hits, I'll be done. Wow. That is so awesome. Interesting. Now, you and I met at the logging conference in September in phoenix and i think i think you actually approached me about being a guest on the show i can't remember the specifics do you i just remember it's just like when i was at the lodging conference hospitality is all about connecting and making someone feel welcome and or just even having a genuine conversation with them so like while i was there i would like look at people's name tags and like see where they were from or where their company was based out of and I remember like saying I checked out your podcast and that you were from Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina. And I'm like, oh, I have family there. And we just <laughs> fed off of that. Oh, man, that is, that is awesome. But I remember you making a, a big impression on me. And I said, man, I need to make sure that I catch up with this guy later on because I want to hear about his story because I'm sure he's going to have a, a great story and a great uh, career in hospitality. So <laughs> so let me let me ask you this question. So you're in the uh, NAU Hospitality Program. Talk a little bit about the program and, and your experience in it so far. So me uh, going to Northern Arizona University is a blessing. I transferred here as a junior and I knew I wanted to do hospitality, but it kind of sucks being that junior in your freshman and sophomore level classes because you feel out of place. But at the same time, everyone starts somewhere. And I'm very fortunate. I've met a lot of great professors and friends throughout my journey and our professors are amazing here. So for instance, our hospitality law professor that we have, it's a guy and a girl, but they still practice law to this day, which is just amazing. They're like, oh yeah, look, you have mergers and ac acquisitions. So for instance, you have Jeff Wu trying to merge with Spirit Airlines. Will that work out for the hospitality industry? Yeah, because it helps out the East Coast significantly, but at the same time, they gave us prime examples, which I'm very fortunate for as well. And I had a professor last year, he taught our cooking class and he was an executive chef or Ritz Carlton. So it's just amazing hearing firsthand experience from your professors that used to do that job or be in the industry a long time ago. Wow, that is cool. And you have a favorite subject in the hospitality program or just kind of all of it kind of your favorite? I can't necessarily say all of it's my favorite. Of course, you're going to have that one class that you're in college that you're like, 
dreading every single minute of. But I'll be honest, hospitality law was really interesting to me because I have a cousin that's a lawyer and it's just learning about the law aspect of hospitality. You never would think anything really goes into it. But there's a lot of things. Look at Darden Restaurant Group. They just acquired Ruth Chris for an insane amount of money. And it's just happening on a yearly basis before we know it. Wow. That is cool. So here, let me do this. Let me take a minute and thank our sponsors because without them, I wouldn't be able to do the podcast. So THM viewers, this episode is sponsored by Recover It. If you've ever experienced a home fire, tornado, or hurricane, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, the Recover It app allows you to record everything in your home. It stores it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike. Instead of you trying to recall all of the valuables that you have in your home, your heirlooms, etc., your jewelry, the the Recover It app allows you to just download it, and now you're in a position to settle faster with your insurance company and get that process moving forward a lot faster. So click the promo code below, and you'll get a 50% off discount on the Recover It app. And as always, we like for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us here on LinkedIn, and this episode with Ben will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify very soon. And we always, always appreciate your feedback. All right. So back to you, Ben. So talk a little bit about the aha moment that you had when you realized that hospitality was perfect for you. So to be honest with you, Ted, it, hospitality moments, I've had a lot of them. And it's just like when I was... 14 years old, going into my freshman year of high school, I got really sick. And I had to be admitted into the hospital for a little over a month. And it's just, you see the work that nurses do day in and day out, and they're not complaining because they're very fortunate and happy to have their job. And just, if you make that connection with them, that's what hospitality is all about. So I just like saw the immense care that the nurses did for me, and I just thought that is hospitality because they care for their patients and put a lot of care into like what they do. So my first major college before I came to Northern Arizona University was nursing because I wanted to go that extra mile and help out people because it's what I love. And I decided it wasn't for me because COVID hit and it's just all the virtual chemistry and biology wasn't for me. So I decided, you know, I'm working at Chick-fil-A right now and I like want to do something that puts a smile on people's faces on a day to day basis. And then I met my girlfriend and she's like, look, you love traveling. You love eating out major in hotel and restaurant management. And I've stuck with it since then. Yeah, that that's an awesome story because the hospitality space really, you either love it or you hate it, right? You're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to survive in hospitality, faking it on a day to day basis because there's just too many people that you, in, you encounter, right? They have to have something a little bit different than somebody that's just kind of playing the role, so to speak. So the hospitality space, I've always said, it's, it's either something that you're gonna completely immerse yourself in, or you're gonna be like, you know, okay, I better look for something else because this isn't gonna work out for me. So I definitely appreciate your story because I think, you know, the hospitality space is, is something that's very unique and you gotta love 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 people to be able to do it so tell me this now if you had an opportunity right now to enter into any hospitality job position what what would it be what would be your dream job or what is your dream job coming out of school in may coming out of high school or college especially it's just like i'm very like happy for it but my dream job would consist of me moving overseas to europe since I have family in Germany and it's just, I'm trying to learn German right now. And it's just, I'm very fortunate that my mom is from Germany and has her mom that still lives over there. And it's just, when you look at American hospitality, like Americans are very like good to their phones, especially my generation. And we don't love the human like aspect of chit chatting face to face, but I'm the person that's the complete poor opposite. I'm only on my phone probably at least two hours a day checking the news and check my email for school and that's about it. And it's just, if you look at these European countries, everyone's so happy because everyone knows everyone or it's just the amount of respect that they treat you with too. It's just 
above and beyond. And you know what? You know, the, the wonderful thing about the uh, hotel space, the hospitality space, is that if you get in with these large brands that have hotels all over the world, you get to experience the international side. You can come back to the U.S. side. You know, you can do so many different uh, things and have so many different experiences all working within one company because of all of the various locations that they've got all over the world. So it's a great uh, it's a great way to broaden your horizons and get that international experience, but also come back and do the U.S. side if you wanted to do that as well. So it does have lots of upside when you think about that that side of it. Right. And it's just like if you look at cruise ships, too, for instance, you may think that like the port's Miami. OK, but you have crew on cruise ships from all over the world, which just makes it so unique. And you never know like, who you'll meet from where whatever country it may be. So when I was um, working at Great Wolf Dodge this summer for a housekeeping internship, we had housekeepers from Cuba, Mexico. And as soon as I started speaking Spanish to them, they're like, wow, he actually knows Spanish and he's making an effort. And my dad's always taught me the life lesson. If you go to a foreign country and know a few words of their language, they're going to appreciate that a lot more instead of you going like, oh, I don't know how to say this or how to say that. Right, right. So it's going to help you learn another language real fast, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I've got... I've got one more question for you. So if you were to take yourself back, right, say four years, and you were an upcoming high school senior, what advice would you give to high school seniors now that may be thinking about a career in hospitality? You know, what advice would you give them? So after I had the opportunity of speaking at my high school last year, um, and I spoke to the culinary classes, and so you had a mix of freshmen in the first class, and then in the second class, you had your sophomores and juniors, and then the third class I spoke to was mainly juniors and seniors. And one piece of advice that I always tell people that are looking at the hospitality industry is things aren't spoon-fed to you. You got to love talking to people, and if you notice something's going wrong, don't let them say something, take initiative, and fix it before they can do something about it. Because if you're able to go that extra mile, for instance, like if I just saw you in the hallway, but I knew your name, I'd be like, oh, hi, how are you, Ted? And like introduce myself. It's kind of like in high school, they teach you, well, look, like you have to find your passion. And yes, it's important to get a college degree to find out what you want to do. But they teach you the elevator pitch. You give that 60 second pitch to like someone that you want to work for and just make that everlasting impression on them. So that's why I was very fortunate to go to the lodging conference this year because it's a great networking opportunity and you get to see all these big name hotel brands and people from all across the nation and even world and how their viewpoint on hospitality is and how it's going to change within the next decade or two. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Thank you, ben. I appreciate you giving us some time today and I'm sure uh, for all of our viewer companies out there that's looking to prepare for 2024 and trying to strengthen their bench to add some, fill some key positions where here's one sharp guy that can help you guys at putting him on your team and he's going to hit the ground running, I'm sure. So Ben, tell folks how they can contact you if they want to talk to you about some upcoming positions that they may have. So I can be connected on LinkedIn, which is my main uh, source. I check it every single morning for job opportunities or whatever's going on in the hospitality industry, as we all know, like LinkedIn, I've always been told, build bridges, not burn them. And it's all about connections in the end of the day. So I could be connected through LinkedIn, which is my first name, Benjamin, and then last name, Gutteridge. Yeah, and you and I connected on LinkedIn. This episode would also highlight your contact info when we're playing it. So that'll be another way for folks to reach out to you. But I am so impressed with you, man. I, I am wishing the best for you. We're rooting for you over here on the THM. We know you're going to do great things, and we look forward to hearing some great stories about you. And we can say, well, we knew Ben when, and now he's a super superstar. So we yeah, thank right. you for the time. <laughs> we thank you yeah. for the time, the time again today, man. And we look forward to staying in touch with you, okay? Sounds good. Thank you, Ted.
All right, man. Hey, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please take a minute to check out Recover, the Recover It app and get 50% off by protecting yourself, your family, and all of your great valuables should disaster strike. And as always, we appreciate you subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking us here on LinkedIn, and as always, you can catch us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. This episode will be, in, will be short there shortly, and we always appreciate your feedback. Have a great day, guys, and we will see you next time from the THM. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.